Hey everybody, welcome fall 2024 layout update for Southern Alberta Rails Crow's Nest subdivision. So we haven't touched base for about six months and there's a few reasons for that. Reason number one is I took on a contracting job that turned out to be a little less part-time than I was hoping it would be. Uh, I was supposed to be work a week, take two or three weeks off uh, throughout the summer. However, there was a backlog of work to be done and ended up putting in about six or seven weeks straight through uh, with no real rest. During this time, my wife and I decided this was the year we were finally going to get the shop put in out behind the house. Now I wanted to build the shop myself, but with all the other projects I had going on, plus the new part-time gig, we decided it was best just to hire a builder. Now this ended up working out great. A fantastic builder, they did a really good job. However, during the process of build-up, I was supposed to be home so that I could oversee what was being done. Just when it was time to get forms put into the ground and concrete poured, I got shipped off to the other side of the country. Now, I had projects out front that required concrete, so the reason I wanted to be around is so that I could use the excess and get the work done out front that I'd been trying to get done for the last year or so. Fortunately for me, there was a few days of rain which delayed the work. I managed to get the Ottawa job wrapped up, flew home, and had five hours of sleep before the first mixer showed up. I managed to get my forms prepped, use the remaining material in the mixer to get my front steps finally poured. After the concrete cured, my main goal was just to get the front patio done. I've been working on this for a couple of years and the end was finally in sight. Now the shop was progressing nicely and it was time to run power. And this is where the next setback and layout progress shows up. Now the power box is in the northeast corner of the house and the second deck of the layout passes in front of it. Now it doesn't pass directly in front of it where it hinders access to it, but that's for me. I'm over six feet tall, I've got no problem getting in there. The electrician that was hired is about five foot four, so all he could see was layout in the way. Now he wanted everything torn out. He wanted the bottom deck, the valance, and the upper deck torn out. I made a compromise, told him I'd take out the upper deck and that he could get in there. Now this is the Sentinel area, a 22 foot long siding and a yard that used to be used for setting out cars for Summit Lion. Cars are now set out further along the layout down at Crow's Nest, so this yard is no longer needed. And I did have plans to change this. However, I didn't think it was going to be forced upon me so quickly. Now, during all this chaos, I did manage to find some time to make progress on the layout. You can see here at Lundbrick that I've got all the rough scenery in place and I've actually started working on some of the finished scenery treatments. Now, over on the member side of the channel, I've got a series called the Lundbrick Realignment that documents all the work through this area step by step. I'm hoping next week to get down and shoot part nine, and that's going to cover the next layer of scenery work. As mentioned in the last layout update though, this will lead to changes on both the east and west end of this area. I also managed to get all my supplies together and finish off my 500 aspens I was working on. This should give me more than enough stock over the winter when it comes time to add color to the top end of the layout between mileposts 46.15 and 50. Now I tend to be a pretty positive person, but I'm not going to lie, having to tear that section I layout out kind of bent me out of shape. So when that happens, the best thing for me to do is take a step back. And with the shop done, my course of action was to gut the back third of the house. So I went into that 110%. And after about three to four weeks of 10 to 12 hour days, I was starting to get my mojo back. And the construction was far enough along that I could turn my attention back downstairs. Now I made the decision a couple of years ago that when I did redo this area, it was going to better represent the track along Crow's Nest Lake. The track along the lake is a never-ending series of S-curves, so it was going to take some planning to figure out how to represent this properly. So I reinstalled the benchwork and began laying out the roadbed along with the lake bed itself. Because of the continuous S-curves, it took a little longer than normal to get the roadbed put back into place. But I was soon around the corner onto the east wall of the house. Now along the east wall of the house is where the existing roadbed from the old layout was still in place. Of course, nothing lined up, so I had to make the decision as to how much more had to be torn out Ultimately, I decided it was probably just best to start from scratch and remove the remaining 35 feet of roadbed. Now within this 35 foot section is the 23 foot long sentinel siding. Trackage through here is basically tangent, 190 degree curve to take the track from the east wall of the house to the south wall of the house. So in comparison to the track along Crow's Nest Lake, this roadbed was quick and painless to get back in. Now I'm a big believer in trying to get a familial feel through commonality of structures on a layout. And nothing shows that more than bridges. So if you compare the bridge here at Michelle Creek to the one that I've installed at 59.25, you can immediately see the family resemblance. 
Now the bridge at 5925 was originally built to cross the Crow's Nest River at Burmas. However, being a through girder, it interfered with the viewing angle of the truss behind it. So it was replaced with a deck girder. Here's a photo of the prototype bridge that inspired the one going in at 5925. This crosses the Crow's Nest River between Blairmore and Frank, Alberta. So with roadbed down, cork in place, super elevation laid out, it was time to get track laid. The steel gang got busy and ballast trains were making the run from the Swansea pit just east of Cranbrook. Here we see SAR 415, an ex-Milwaukee Road SD40-2, leading ballast loads up along Michelle Creek toward the BC Alberta border and the Continental Divide. And we catch 415 again at Crow's Nest. Crow's Nest is the Continental Divide and the border between BC and Alberta. Now as mentioned, 415 is an ex-Milwaukee Road SD40-2. While decked out in SCR's latest paint scheme for non-wide cab units, the shortened fuel tank is a dead giveaway to its previous ownership. The second unit, however, SAR 303's paint, leaves no doubt as to its previous ownership. And our ballast trains now tiptoeing out onto the new track along Crow's Nest Lake here. All told, 55 feet of new main line were laid. There'll be about 22 to 23 feet of siding put into place as well as back track. This is basically in essence an all new section of layout. The wall along the Crow's Nest Lake here is 48 feet and there's only one section of tangent track where Summit Lime is. Thus crews on the SAR affectionately refer to this area as the Snake Pit. Now the track along Crow's Nest Lake is boxed in by mountain on the north side and lake on the south side. I really hope to do that justice here. This will become a signature scene that really sets the location of the layout, as well as an area to really showcase the advantages to modeling a mainline and end scale. Now a short train like our Ballast Extra here can't do this scene justice. So let's tuck this thing away on the siding at West Sentinel and get a loaded unit sulfur train rolling through the area. Now this train is 19 feet long, and as you can see, these curves will pretty much swallow up the entire length of it. So this is where I think N-Scale has the advantage over others when it comes to mainline modeling. Big trains being swallowed up by even bigger scenery. I really want to emphasize that here with a massive amount of lakefront running, big rocks behind the tracks, and making that train secondary to the scenery itself. Now this entire 48 foot long wall of the house is known as the Snake Pit and it actually consists of two lakes. As we leave the shores of Crow's Nest Lake, we slip past the Summit Lime Works and pick up the shores of Island Lake. Island Lake is the second smallest in the chain. The tracks follow Island Lake before diving underneath Highway 3 and arriving at Crow's Nest. At Crow's Nest we encounter the third lake, Summit Lake, which drains west. We cross the Continental Divide, enter BC, drop down grade following Michelle Creek and arrive at the west end of the layout, the Sparwood Staging Yards. Now, if you're interested in the construction along Crow's Nest Lake, I've got a series over on the member side of the channel called the Hazel Hack series. I'm up to part five with that. I'm also doing a supplemental video on installing the switch and the tortoise at West Switch Sentinel, as well as kicking off a new series that's going to cover the installation and the scenery work at the bridge at 5925. I'm also still working on the Lundbrook line relocation series. And as mentioned earlier, we're up to part nine on the scenery in that one. If any of that blows your kilt up, consider becoming a channel member. Hit that join button. As always, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you feel up to it. And we'll see you in the next video.